fair game. Today, Mark will travel a couple of hours upriver to check the progress of a novel project to protect Wakaris. It was launched by the same man who championed Lago Preto, biologist Richard Bodmer. The red wakari monkey is a very unique species because it's rare and it's only found in these small pockets. Those reflect very intact forests full of biodiversity. Bodmer has studied the impact of hunting on the local mammals. And what we found is animals such as the peccary, the deer, the agouti, those animals can withstand a lot of hunting. They reproduce very quickly, they have lots of young, and the people can hunt them and their populations continue. Other animals such as the red wakari monkey, the woolly monkey, the lowland tapir, they reproduce very slowly. And if you start hunting those animals, those populations crash. The village of Nueva Esperanza is working with the Wildlife Conservation Society on a new model for sustainable hunting. The local people in Esperanza work very closely with WCS and actually write down everything they shoot. And they have the date, the sex of the, of the animal. Biologist Alfredo Dos Santos regularly reviews the village hunting log with the chief. One of the things that we talk about is about what species they can hunt and what species they shouldn't be hunting. And red wakaris is one of the species that they shouldn't be hunting. I'm looking through and it's mainly things like peccary and deer, and monkeys are actually quite rare on the list. And so far, there's, there's no red wakari monkeys at all. Alfredo also tracks animal hides. The goal isn't to end hunting, just redirect it. They, they don't have a supermarket they can go to to buy food. Their supermarket is a forest. So we're working with the people in order to manage their hunting in a way that they never lose that supermarket, that the animals are always out there. And the only way to have those animals always out there is to have an intact forest. So this is actually a way to help conserve the Amazon forests. We have a wonderful planet, at least in my, in my Amazon. We have so many things to protect and so many things that are disappearing every day. Everybody should understand that we can't just lose everything we have. Local hunters are getting the message, yet the threat from hunting remains. Now it comes from an unexpected direction. Logging is banned in Lago Preto, but all around it goes on. We know the red wakari is a threatened species, but it's always very difficult to justify the conservation of, of one species. These forests are very valuable for timber and for oil, and Peru doesn't have a particularly wealthy economy. What's affecting the red wakaris most is hunting by underpaid and underfed loggers. Wakaris and many other Amazonian animals can end up back in Iquitos in the market as food or pets. Hunting bushmeat is legal in Peru. For many in this poor country, it's the only way to eat. Hunting won't affect species that are fast breeders, but for others, every death threatens their survival. So this is Belen Market in Iquitos, where a lot of the bushmeat that's hunted in the Amazon ends up, including monkeys sometimes. And the biggest problem we have in the forest on the Avari River is hunting. So we don't want the red wakari monkeys ending up in markets like this. Just 20 kilometers away is a very different place. A place where monkeys are saved, 
an unusual sanctuary run by an accidental savior. A chance to see the Wakari up close and probe another mystery. Gudrun Sparer runs a butterfly farm, but she takes in all kinds of animals. The forest orphans, who might end up as pets or on the dinner plate. Funded mostly through donations, Gudrun runs the only wildlife orphanage of its kind in Peru. This one, for example, was dropped here by tourists who had seen that street children are throwing away at a garbage place, a monkey. He saw it first it was dead, then he saw it's moving. And he got it, pitied it, it was very sick. He brought the monkey here. We are educating the people, so people from here, the children know, get to know the animals, see them free and maybe start liking them. And people from other countries learn about them and maybe don't get the idea that it would be great to have them as a pet. Getting so close offers Mark a shot at another Wakari riddle. Its strange face. The color of the face comes from the specialized blood vessels just under the skin. So if you push the blood out of the blood vessels, the skin goes white and turns red again when the blood comes back in. So when these monkeys get sick, they, they also go very pale. For the Wakari, it appears skin tone tells all. In Wakaris, instead of having an alpha male, which is clearly the strongest, and which is easy for the females to choose, Wakaris are in these groups of males. So the female has to have a different mechanism to choose the best male. So they're using the red face as an indicator of health to, to pick the healthiest monkey for their mate. The redder the face, the healthier the monkey. After three weeks of tracking Wakaris, Mark is excited by his results. Every adult female he saw in one large group had babies. Confirming his theory, a good fruit season last year means a good birth rate this year. His plan is to return in six months in the wet season when the Wakari's favorite fruit is ripe. <laughs> 